Yeah, I'm here with Stefan Engels, the CFO of Commerce Bank, on a day when your shares are up 5%. So let's start with what you thought was the most positive aspect of today's earnings report. I think there's quite a number of positive aspects. Uh, you can see our customers grow, you can see our assets grow, you can see the loan book grow. Uh, you see clean revenues growing as well on the on the back of uh, a strong NII, which I think is the best part of uh, of it. Net interest and income. Net interest income, exactly. And you have seen a Q4, uh, which uh, in volatile markets uh, performed very well and proved the resilience of the business model. So I think the best message is Commerzbank 4.0 is working. Um, and that is, uh, I think, a clear proof of uh, what we did in 17 and 18. Now, if I look at the, the targets that you have had to abandon so far, last time we spoke, you had to um, abandon your, your 2020 revenue target. Today, uh, you said you're not going to make 6% return on tangible equity, and you're not going to be able to get headcount down to 36,000. Are you having to rethink your turnaround plan? The basic uh, setup in 2016, I think, never foresaw such a prolonged period of negative interest rates, which is the key driver uh, for uh, the revenue um, target adjustment. And as you adjust revenues and costs can be adjusting uh, so quickly at the same time, it's pretty clear uh, that your cost income ratio then, for example, also um, adjusts as well as your return. Uh, I think the more important thing still is that what we have been doing is is paying off, albeit not at the pace and the steepness of the approach as we would have originally wished for, but it's working, it's paying off, it's doing its job. On the um, headcount, uh, it is pretty clear that the headcount reduction will stay the same, uh, which means that we will um, um, cut about 9,600 jobs gross. What we will do in parallel, and that's a learning from 17 and 18 with our compass setup, that doing, uh, dig, uh, that doing agile projects with uh, a number of external consultants is not the most effective way. So what we are doing basically in uh, 19 and 20 is setting up Compass 2.0, swapping project cost uh, into um, FTEs, uh, which then uh, will uh, make us uh, a lot more agile, faster in, in the cluster. So you had a big digitalization plan, a big fintech um, uh, uh, plan, and you were using external uh, people and companies to do that. Now you're going to bring it internally, and that's yeah. what, where you're going to add. How many employees are you going to add, and how much is it going to cost? Yeah, the original goal was um, uh, 36,000 around. We are now uh, slightly above 38,000, so you can... Um, guess that that part is encompassing that, plus growth in our subsidiaries, which has been um, uh, a lot more uh, than we originally anticipated. Mbang is a, is a prime example. And then you need to keep in mind that also the compliance part is still growing, not only in the compliance function as such, but also in the, in the front office. On the cost side, as I said before, given that we, for the external consultants, basically swap uh, project IT project budget into FTEs, we even expect uh, no additional cost. So the six and a half billion target for 2020 is unchanged. Um, well, what we see is a slight um, um, growth in FTEs at the expense, so to speak, of uh, other costs. You still have said, you know, it's it's difficult to get a competitive return. I think you said in the the press conference in Germany, it's impossible to get a competitive return in this country with the economy the way it is. The ECB is basically stuck. Um, how do you do it then? What are your plans? Now, the plan is um, uh, the things are uh, d keeping on doing the things that have been working for the last two years, which is basically growing revenue and cutting cost. Um, and in that sense, um, I think um, going for a, uh, a proper return is what uh, every management team is, is driving for. But again, uh, given that Germany is one of the most deposit richest country uh, around uh, the negative interest rates is obviously weighing on the business. Yeah, Nonetheless, yeah. it's a country that's narrowly skirting a recession right now. Um, GDP growth was zero after a decline in the last quarter. Olaf Scholz and uh, Peter Altmaier would like to see Commerzbank get together with Deutsche Bank. Is that, do you think, a way to improve returns? I think we, we focus on its facts, um, and the um, fact is that uh, the German economy did grow in 2018, and we expect it to grow also in 2019. I expect China to grow, I expect the US to grow, and basically I also expect uh, Europe to grow. So we are, from my point of view, nowhere near a recession.
When you look at the Venn diagram between Commerce Bank and Deutsche Bank, what kind of overlap do you see there? I'm sure you've thought about it, or maybe you call up James von Moltke and you discuss it on the phone. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I really like the very smart approach to the issue, but I don't want to add to any speculation today. All right, let's talk about then consolidation in general in the industry. Does it have to happen in order for banks to make returns? Again, same, uh, same issue that I just said. I don't want to add anything to that speculation. I think there has been enough said in the past uh, and, and written as well. So. That's not the topic. Let's talk about a sure thing. Brexit uh, looks like it's going to happen, possibly on time, March 29th. Um, I know you're moving some bankers already out. Uh, how much of your business do you want to move out of London? And how bad will it be for business if it's a hard Brexit? Now, yeah, the basic approach is that we want to serve our UK customers uh, uh, with our London team, and that is uh, what the plan is. We have uh, restructured the London operation for other reasons already in 2015 and 2016. So what we have there is basically a very focused setup for our UK uh, business. There's also the EMC business, which we have so just sold to Sockchain, so that makes it even a little smaller. Um, so preferably, that is what we want to do. Wherever we get to now at March 29 or any other point uh, in the future, uh, we are prepared uh, for some things. We have transitory agreements to cater for all possibilities. But again, the focus is uh, to stay in London and serve our business there. Yeah. Let me finally ask you about um, talent. We talked a lot about headcount and uh, employees. Retaining, bringing on new talent must be difficult with what's happened to the stock price. You know, German banks are very much underperforming. How do you get people to come, the smartest, the best, and the brightest, to come work at, at Commerce Bank? There's a variety of people. And again, looking at uh, what we are planning uh, on the campus side uh, and what we have achieved on the campus side, uh, that is something that's very attractive, especially to the younger, more digital, agile um, uh, generation. They are not necessarily uh, coming for share price, variable pay, or other perks. They have a different set of, of, uh, of assumptions or wishes uh, that are indeed very best uh, catered in these somewhat uh, agile cluster type of organizations. So attracting talent for the relative stuff is, uh, for the relevant uh, topics is not a problem.